So here we have same circuit. Calculate power dissipated in R1 and R2. Power dissipated basically means how much is this using or losing in each of these resistors. So all it's basically saying is calculate the power in each of those resistors. So we have three formulas we can use. Um, you can all use all of them, to be quite honest, but some of them may require you to calculate other things along the way. So in order to calculate anything that says power dissipated, the go-to formula that I tend to use is always I squared R. So whenever I read the word power dissipated, more often than not, this is the value and the formula that I tend to go with. But it does depend what you happen to know. So I squared times R. For the power in, R1 will do first. So in order to work out the power dissipated in this resistor, it has to be the current that passes through this resistor. Well, it's a series circuit, so current stays the same. So it happens to be IT. We want to find the power in that resistor, so this has to be R1. And if we put those figures in, 2 squared times 35. And that then will give you your calculation for this one here. To find the power in R2, I'm going to use the same formula again, I squared times R. So it will be the current that passes through that resistor, so because it's series, it has to be IT times R2. Putting those figures in, 2 squared times 15. So if we do these two calculations, 2 squared times 35, 140 watts. 2 squared times 15, 60 watts. How can we check this to see if it's correct? Well, from earlier on, we knew that this circuit had a total of 200 watts, 140 plus 60 is 140, therefore power total is equal to P1 plus P2. One forty plus sixty. So we could have got to this power here if we know that the power totals add up. So we could have done one hundred and forty take away from two hundred. Could have also given us this. So there is more than one way to get to an answer once you start to understand everything. So let's try it again, but this time use one of the other formulas. Let's do power equals V times I. So we want to do the power dissipated in R1, but we want to use V times I. So which V do we use? Well, we have Vs, but we want to find the power dissipated in R1. So in order to work this one out, we need to find the voltage across this resistor. In order to find the power dissipated in this resistor, and using this formula, it needs to be the voltage associated with that and the current passing through that. So effectively, we need to find V1 across the voltage across that resistor. So V1, and then the current passing through that resistor, which is IT. So there is an unknown voltage, we don't know that at the moment, but whatever it is, it will be multiplied by 2. So we've got to find V1. So from Ohm's law, V1 is equal to I times R. So to find V1, it is the current passing through that resistor, IT, times the resistance of that resistor, which is 1. And therefore, 2 times 35 is 70. Don't know why I did that. Easy to make mistakes. So 70 volts. So we now know our voltage is 70 volts. So that we can put this in over here. So 
2 times 70 equals 140 watts. If we wanted to find using the same formula again to find the power in R2, it will be V times IT and therefore you would have to find V2 because it would have to be this voltage here which is across that resistor so it would be the voltage times 2 well what we do know from Kirchhoff is we know that V2 is Vs minus V1. So if we put those figures in, that's 100 take away 70 gives us 30 volts across V2. So we can put that in. So now we have V2 times I2. 30 times 2 gives us 60 watts. Slightly more long-winded, so if you do happen to use that formula, then you have to do something like this over here to get to the same answer. Remember, we can check our answers, because power total we know is 200, so 140 plus 60 gives us 200 watts. So, same power formula again, but this time we're going to use this one here. Okay, so to use this, we want to power dissipate in each resistor, so R1, we're going to use the V squared over R. So it's just important to know which V and which R. So we want to find the power dissipated in that resistor. So how much power does that resistor use? So it has to be not the voltage supply, it has to be the voltage across that resistor, so it's V1, and then that squared divided by the resistance of that resistor, so that becomes R1. Well, we already calculated these from earlier, so therefore 70 squared divided by 35. 140. Do the same again. Power in R2, we use the same formula, V squared over R. Well, again, it has to be the voltage, so that becomes V2 squared divided by R2. So we put those figures in. We already calculated. We calculate from Kirchhoff's law over here. So that becomes 30 squared divided by 15, which gives you 60 watts. And again, earlier on we calculated power total can be P1 plus the power in R2. So 140 plus 60 gives the total power 200 watts.